Hey everybody, Adam Savage here in my cave with a new one day build that involves this pink foam. Uh, this is a home insulation foam called uh, Foamular, made by Owens Corning. And um, I used to use this stuff for all of my builds. It is, was like one of the ultimate cheap, uh, cheap volumetric carvable, sandable, paintable materials. And I built everything out of it in the 90s. Um, today, we're gonna use this to make a safe. Yeah, a safe. Bear with me, it's gonna become clear as, as we go. Okay, so what do I mean by safe? I mean like an old safe, like an old cast iron safe, like a really heavy safe, except I'm gonna make mine super lightweight out of this foam. Um, years and years and years ago, 20 years ago, I, I heard about a shop in New York where the guys did theater props and hanging from the ceiling from chains, they had this super lightweight foam safe. And that, just the idea of that makes me happy. It makes me, it makes me smile. And as an object, I have always coveted this lightweight foam safe. So I thought for today's one day build, I'm gonna build one. That was the cut point. Okay, now you can cut. Come on, cut away already. A note about this phone. Um, Owens Corning has made this stuff for many years. Uh, and again, like I said, back in the 90s, I used it for everything. You could buy it at any hardware store. It came two inches thick by like six or eight feet tall and like two feet wide. It was such a cheap amount of volume you could purchase to modify and make into any prop that you wanted. Um, Sadly, this is no longer the case. This is the only form factor I could find it in, one inch thick uh, and roughly two by two feet. Um, and it was not cheap. Uh, in fact, this stack here, which is only, uh, it's basically a cube of foam, two by two by two feet, and I paid 160 bucks for it, which is like, I'm the sucker, I get that. But as I set out to make a foam safe, this was what I got. And the perfect being the enemy of the good, I decided to proceed anyway. But this build would work with any foam you wanted to use. Expanded polystyrene, rigid urethane foam. Hell, you could build this out of soft urethane foam if you felt like it, but you don't have to. Today, we're gonna use Owen Corning's home insulation foam. One of the best things about working with foam is that all of your normal woodworking tools, your saws and your uh, sanders and stuff work just as well on the foam as they do on wood, except they work faster uh, and, and generally safer. Um, I need to figure out the form factor of my safe first and foremost, and it's going to be it's going to be a small one. It's it's not going to be much bigger in its in any of its dimensions than the actual dimension of this foam. But I'm going to start by drawing it up, and then we'll start figuring out the sizes of everything. Is that the way I want to do this? Actually, I think I'm not going to do that as a plan. I think I'm going to start. Hmm. Okay, I like starting with the most difficult part of a build first, and the most difficult part of this particular build is the door. Making the door look right, feel right, and be right. So I'm gonna build the door first. Yeah, I'm gonna build the door first, and then I'm gonna build the safe around the door. I think that's how I wanna do this, okay. The other thing about this video that you should know is that it's going to be a speed build. I'm building this as if I had to do this for a theater. <clears throat> and that means I'm gonna use all these non-exotic materials like PVC pipe and a piece of wooden, a wooden dowel that was made for a cane. Um, yeah, this is gonna be all about as fast, quick, dirty, and cheap as I would be doing if I was working for a local community theater. The first thing I believe I'm going to make, mock up here are the hinges. Yeah, the hinges is definitely the very first thing. So uh, yeah, let's get started.
inch one, inch two. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, so I want to cut that down. And that, and then half of that. So I've got, yep, hinges. One of the nice things about working with an old looking piece like this is that these old saves all looked like they were hand built by people. Consequently, a hand hewn aspect to this works in my favor, not against me. So I'm really letting this one be nice and sloppy. All right. All right, I'm gonna sand these on my sander. All right, let's see what I got here. Let's sand this guy. All right, so here are the hinges made of one, two, three, four, five pieces. I have two pieces of MDF that I used a Forstner bit to cut a half round in by sandwiching them together. And that Forstner bit is roughly the diameter of the PVC pipe. I then cut two pieces of PVC pipe, embedded a dowel in one, but put them both together to glue them in. And there I get this drop in hinge which look, I know this isn't a high security hinge, but it looks the part. Yeah, it looks the part and it's totally actually functional. So, by the way, gluing sandpaper to a board, is one of the best little tools you can have in your shop. Just do it. This is about the size of this door, I think. And so I think, let's see here. Let's do a 12 by 13. Great. 12 by 13. So uh, I've got the, this is the door. Uh, it's going to be a little thicker even than this, but um, it's not, it, it can't have straight edges. It's gotta have angled edges and it needs to have a little step, step edge as well. And I'm going to add all that. I've set my table saw blade to a 15 degree angle and I'm gonna take off the sides of this. And then I have to saw some of this stuff to match that angle so I can assemble the body, the face of this. So I'm going to assemble basically, I'm gonna start with the door, then I'm going to build the face of the safe around the door. This is the kind of thing that foam building allows you to do. I can kind of make this up as I go. Um, but first, I need to make these two pieces monolithic, and I'm going to do that using a bit of um, this headliner and carpet adhesive. This is like a spray glue. It's a spray rubber-based glue. Um, this is made by Permatex. I really like this stuff. I use it on the headliner on my Land Cruiser, and it has not failed years later. So that's a net good. You're gonna love how well this stuff glues with this with this uh, spray adhesive. It's going to be really, really awesome. 
we're gonna let it get kind of usually I let this get tacky and then I join it this I'm actually gonna let it get more dry because I want um, I want to make sure that I have really good adhesion I have assembled uh, the opening and I've assembled the door. Now, if you noticed while uh, watching that time lapse, I accidentally sprayed this side of the foam. Again, that's not going to matter to what we're going to do with this build. Uh, but right now, what I've got is a door that fits in. Yep. Yeah. Okay. You can see we're proceeding right along. I'm going to add another little lip on the inside of this to help strengthen those joints. Uh, and then I'm going to build out the safe around the perimeter of this. Yeah.
So, we have built a box out of foam. Its construction methodology is pretty clear. I've got a lovely little opening there, and my door fits right in that opening. Oh, that is a very satisfying kind of moment, uh-huh. Uh, and now it's incumbent on me to make this thing look like a safe rather than a bunch of foam blocks glued together, and I'm gonna do that using an orbital sander with a heavy grit sandpaper. This is, uh, yeah, this is gonna tie this whole thing together. And then I've glued a couple of foam sheets for legs. I'll put those on. And then we get to the aestheticizing the painting and that's where the stuff gets really fun. But first, there's a whole bunch of sanding I'm gonna get a dust mask on. I have taken the hinges that I assembled out of PVC pipe and MDF, and I've attached them to the door, and lo, I've got a drop-in hinge door. Whoop, look at that. Now, this is the basic form factor of my safe. I'm very pleased with it. Um, and I've completed all the aspects of this build that I need to do before it's time to give it a coat of paint. But before I give it a coat of paint, I'm gonna actually try out a new product on it, one I haven't tried before. Uh, Roscoe, Roscoe, which if you're in the film industry, you know these guys very well. They make all sorts of things associated with film uh, and uh, products and expendables. Uh, they're just like one of the mainstays of the film industry. Roscoe makes this uh, crystal gel, which is a clear styrene gel that will go over anything and it won't melt this foam. That's really awesome. Uh, and it provides a kind of a, a Mod Podge type of coating for it that should dry fairly quickly. So I'm gonna give both the door and the safe itself a coat of this, a rough coat. I, I want this thing to look and feel rough, rough, rough around the edges. It's really starting to shape up though, isn't it? Doesn't it feel like a safe? Uh, and then, while that's drying, I'll work on my um, my handle here, my dial, and a, and a lever knob. Since those are totally separate uh, constructions that won't have anything to do with the paint job on this, uh, I can work on those separately. But dude, I am I am mighty pleased with how this feels so far. And again, this is theater construction. This is Halloween decoration construction. I'm going quick and dirty. Careful viewers of this build might have noted that I've already used three different kinds of glues. I have used this headliner high strength glue. I've also used a little CA glue, which actually, I always forget, CA glue eats up this foam a lot and it's, no, it's not good. So, ixnay on the CA glue. Um, but I did have this uh, 3M Scotch Weld hot melt gun, which puts out a low temperature uh, adhesive in the form of these. But I did also, I have also been using this uh, Scotch Melt, Scotch, Scotch Weld 3M uh, low temperature hot glue, and it's working fantastically. It's actually allowing me to fill seams and things like that. Um, so it's actually operating somewhat like a spackle but it also allows me to make things that look like welds. And because it doesn't eat the foam, I'll be able to paint right over it. And it doesn't, yeah. So basically I'm really digging this uh, 3M low melt hot glue as a solution. So note here, like this is where I could get into trouble, right here, this little, this little holiday right there. So I'm just gonna go in with the hot melt and kind of, and when I wanna spackle it, Tom Sachs would use a putty knife. I just use my finger. Oh, that's not like, I'm not talking shit about Tom. I'm just saying he's much more adept with the putty knife and hot glue than I am. Here's a seam I filled earlier. 
This is shaping up really, really well. All right, uh, I'm gonna get some brown paper on the table saw, move the table saw in a little bit, clean up some of this foam, get a coat of paint on this, and then I'll start working on those other details while this is drying. Now, a word about the painting technique I'm using here. I'm doing a lot of what's called stippling. So I'm laying out uh, the main brushes, and then I'm trying to get rid of brush strokes by tapping, by tapping my brush. Uh, and this helps spread out the human. <laughs> Look, a brush stroke is just really clear that a human brush to paint brush over there. And I, I like to get rid of those looks. Um, so it's tedious to be sure to sit here and do this to the entire thing. But overall, it took about half an hour and uh, now it's drying. And actually, it seems to be drying pretty quickly. I'm very pleased. So you can see here where I'm running a blow dryer, it's getting more and more translucent, and that's how we know that this is drying. Um, and frankly, I expect it all to be dry within roughly an hour. I'm gonna make sure I hit the whole thing with some heat to encourage it. My, uh, the safe is drying well, it's not bad. And I've just turned my dial, my safe dial, out of this, which is actually Instacast. It's a odorless white, um, fast curing urethane resin, uh, usually sold under the name Instacast or Fastcast or something like that. Um, it's funny, uh, to get monolithic chunks of round stock to lathe, um, when I was working for Jamie. It's expensive to keep going to get Delrin uh, and other, other uh, industrial machining plastics. So we would take pieces of PVC pipe and pour Instacast in it. And then we would machine the blocks of Instacast we ended up with. Instacast is fabulous for machining. It does not dull your bits. Uh, the urethane resin, uh, it machines very, and a little, little tendril there. Ah. Uh, the urethane resin machines really well. So it's a great low cost material for machining blanks. Um, and uh, little known fact, hold on. Since, the, uh, since PVC pipe is extruded, I can tell you that the insides are perfectly parallel, which means if you hot glue this to a board, if you hot glue this to a piece of foam core, spray some mold release inside of it, hot glue it to some foam core, and then fill it full of resin, you should be able to, with a hammer blow, move that resin out once it is set. Yeah, seriously, that's how we used to do it. And we'd take like five inch pieces of PVC, like six inches long to make a big block and machine it for some aesthetic prop. Now I'm gonna cut this down on my bandsaw. This is a little, this is the only chunk I had. I'm gonna have to make some more. Um, I'm gonna have to, I wanna make it thinner than that, and I will just, I'll have to do that on the sander. All right, the safe is almost entirely dry. It is now time to give it a coat of paint. Uh, I know it looked like I just gave it a coat of paint, but what I gave it was a protective coat that makes it a monolithic surface, and that allows me to paint it, and it's all gonna look the same color. Um, and that Roscoe stuff, man, with a blow dryer, that coat dried in less than an hour. I was really, really impressed. That's awesome stuff. The door stays open. I've got a dial here. Ooh, I'm really happy with that dial. That's gonna live right there. And I'm gonna put in a little lever there. Uh, but right now, I'm gonna put on a breath mask. And coat this thing with black paint. That's gonna be its base coat. All right, so now we've got the black paint job on the safe, and it's coated in and out. It's great. If I had could do one thing over, I would have painted the inside before I put it inside the outside of the safe because it's hard to paint on the inside of stuff. 
that being said, um, I am now going to give this a kind of, well, I think what you can see is that while it's visible, there are aspects to the monolithic nature of the paint job that makes it hard to see. And the first time I had to paint something metal was for a friend's senior thesis film at NYU back in the 80s. And I had these plastic cauldrons and I needed them to look heavy. And what I did was I hit them with some metallic spray paints and then I killed the metallic as I was painting with some black primer. And that's what I'm about to do here. I've got these three different colors. I've got a gold, I've got a copper, and I've got a chrome. And with three of these, I'm hoping to give this thing a kind of a warm metallic feeling that I'm gonna keep on killing with the black until it sort of exudes, I am made of metal. That might not be realistic to a genuine safe that you might find somewhere, but that's not what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to make a prop. I'm trying to make something that communicates its weight and its manufacture really quickly. And in theater, you tend to do that with the most obvious thing you can, which is you want to make it look like it's metal, paint it to look like it's metal. Um, so the whole idea is to kind of draw out of this a feeling that it is heavy. And right now, it's black. It's starting to look heavy. It's definitely a thing. But uh, with these metallic spray paints, I hope to carry it to the next level. Right, one more sip before I get back in the mask. Hmm. We're moving along a pace, and it's going well. It's not going amazingly. I'm not like totally blown away by this paint job yet, but again, that's a process. I, it feels more like an old thing. I'm still kind of workshopping it. I've got some uh, Rust-Oleum, no, that's matte. I want gloss. I've got some Quilon clear coat here. I'm gonna do that. That'll add a kind of a, a layer, a depth layer to it. We'll see how that does. Oh, that last thing you saw me do where it looked like I was making it dirty, I was using Fuller's Earth. I had a rag covered with Fuller's Earth. I was kind of rubbing the whole thing to kind of give it a texture. We're continuing. Okay, now we're about to add one of my favorite painting techniques, and that is graphite powder. Oh, my pretties, I love this stuff so much. Um, but it will make you filthier than you've ever been in your life. So, gear up. Here we go. Ooh. All right, now I'm kind of pleased with how it's looking. The tonality is really nice. It's not too matte, it's not too shiny. It's starting to feel much more monolithic, like a single hunk of something. Uh, I'm now going to do a bit of treatment with some rub and buff. We have been making great progress all day. Uh, we're about four hours in, and I'm pretty pleased with how this looks. We're gonna add a couple things right now to 
send this puppy home. Here we go. I'm going to add some hot glue right now. Come on, come on. Get our dial in there. And and here we go. Oh yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. So this is an end cap off of some drum kit I've had in a box full of material hardware. That's the dial I turned out of the urethane Instacast. This is an old file handle I had in a box full of file handles. And I don't know about you, but this feels pretty freaking authentic and safe like. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Remember how I did the uh, thing on how to weather money a few weeks ago. Check this out there. Look at that. Throw a little cash. Throw a little cash in our in our safe. Dude. Um, now, I plan to hang this from the ceiling of the tested office. They don't know it yet, but they're all gone because it's locked down. So, I bought some of this beautiful Beautiful chain. And it's all plastic. to me. <laughs> oh man, that is just, that just makes me so freaking happy. Look at that. That just, that feels like something that is way heavier than the about six pounds that it actually weighs. Oh, look at that object. It pleases me. All right. Thank you guys for joining me for this one day build. I will see you next time. Thanks for watching that video. If there's a video equivalent of the Clean Plate Club, you're a member. Uh, if you want to support us, one of the best ways you can do it is going to our merch store and purchasing one of our beautiful new posters. This is my hand-drawn sketch of uh, my two toolboxes that I used when I was an active model maker at Industrial Light and Magic in the late 90s and the early aughts. There's also on the far left side of the poster a list of all of the tools I had in these toolboxes, and I used them daily for almost a decade. Again, you can get your own version of this printed on a beautiful cardstock by following the links below.